guys welcome back to my channel yeah i know it's been a really long time but i'm trying to become more consistent with this youtube thing again people have been asking me for so long when are you getting back on youtube so here i am and i'm coming back today with a welcome back q a video so i got this idea because i'm like you know i've been going for so long people probably want to know what i've been up to with my businesses personal life whatever the case may be so i'm here today with a new video but before we get into this video you guys need to subscribe to my channel because it's gonna be so many lit things coming that i have planned like i made a whole list of new content for you guys so make sure you subscribe before we even get started and yeah and of course make sure you also like and comment during this video so you know we can interact with one another because I'm definitely going to respond to all of your comments. So, without further ado, let's get into this video. Alright, well before I get into the questions, I just want to let you guys know what's been going on. Like, my last video that I made was a vlog while I was graduating from college. That was almost a whole year ago. So since then, so much has happened. Like, I know you guys know I launched my um my clothing line but since then like i've done so much like pop-up shops i've launched so many different lines within my clothing brand and it's just been such a busy time so it's so hard for me to really sit down and get personal personal on youtube but i really want to just get back and let you guys know exactly what's been going on so like i said i've had pop-up shops and I've been so consistent with my clothing line, and trust me, I did not figure out my hair business, but I've been so consistent with this new business that people just have so many questions on like, how did you do so much in one year? So I'm just gonna let you guys know what I did to basically set myself apart with my business and get to where I am now. So now we can get into the video. What are three things you would tell an upcoming entrepreneur? So, three things that I would tell a person that wants to become an entrepreneur or is upcoming in the entrepreneur world. Number one, be consistent. Like, nothing happens overnight and if you have a dream and it's something that you're really passionate about, whatever you do, don't give up. Um, make sure that you're giving your giving your business your all because without you putting that effort in, nobody else is going to be able to really help you. You have to be putting your effort best foot forward first that's one thing i would tell somebody number two make sure you save because you never know what could happen especially when you're working for yourself you don't really have a backing financially especially if you're not really up in what you're doing um so yeah definitely save that's important especially because when you are an entrepreneur there are going to be so many rainy days especially when you're starting out so that's especially for somebody that's a full-time entrepreneur if you are an entrepreneur and you have a, another job, it's also just good to save that money that you have coming in. Saving is just important in general. Number three. Hmm. What's the third thing that I would tell somebody that wants to be an entrepreneur? Keep yourself motivated. Like I feel like self-motivation as an entrepreneur is so important because nobody's going to understand your vision more than you. So you have to do things that's going to bring you back to your why you initially started. So keep yourself motivated and around positive energy because that's going to be so important when you're on this journey of being an entrepreneur. So that's three things that I would tell an upcoming entrepreneur. So... Let's get into question number two. Somebody asked, at what point did you say, okay, now I can quit my job and become a full-time entrepreneur? So I didn't have that moment where I could quit my job and become an entrepreneur full-time. I actually, it's complicated. Like I actually got, I wanna say fired from my job. So I had to, I really didn't have a choice because I had to just start getting money. So pretty much when I was in school, I was like 20 years old so I was working at Victoria's Secret while I was in Maryland at school because I went to Morgan State so I was working there and I told my boss like okay I'm going home for the summer because I would always come home to New York and just you know be home for the summer so when I left I came back to school after the summer with hopes of getting my job back and when I arrived back in Maryland there was no job there for me so long story short at that time, I started applying to so many jobs like Nordstrom, Mac, 
Zara, places, you can, you name it, Bath and Body Works, anywhere in the mall by my school, just so I can get some extra money in my pocket. And when I tell you nobody was hiring me, like nobody was calling me back, nobody was saying I'm a follow up, it was none of that. So at that point, like I was already doing makeup a little bit. So I just made a flyer real quick and I was like, all right, I'm gonna start doing makeup because I was already selling my lashes at that point. So like, I'm gonna just add makeup just to get some extra money. And at that point, I was already doing lashes, the lash thing for like a year. So when that time came around to make my year anniversary, I did like a $12 lash sale. So I'm like, all right, I really need some money. I really hope that this sale like just fixes all my problems that I have right now. Because at that point, I had an apartment. I had to pay rent, pay bills. And I was just stuck because I couldn't get a job. And I was just, you know, really starting out with this entrepreneur thing. So I put up my $12 lash sale. It started at midnight on November 12th because that's my anniversary date for my business. And... I went to sleep, I did my site, whatever, went to sleep, woke up the next morning and I made like over two grand in $12 lashes. So when that happened, I was like, oh, I'm about to take this thing seriously. So I took it as a sign from God that I was like, all right, maybe he didn't want me to work for anybody anymore. And he wanted me to really put my best foot forward with my business. So that was just the moment where I said, okay, I'ma just really, be full time with this like because I, like i said i couldn't get a job anywhere else and i just really just took it as a sign so that's the point where i said okay i'm gonna just be a full-time entrepreneur and that was in what year was that i want to say that was 2016 so i've been doing it full-time for three years now and i've been in business for four it's with blink beauty as for renee nyc it's only been a year but business is my passion and i always knew that was something i wanted to do so when the perfect moment came i just took advantage of it all right question number three someone asked to start up your online boutique did you have a set amount of cash that you wanted to start off with okay so when i first decided to start my clothing line my online boutique whatever you guys want to call it i had broke my foot so I was just, I had a lot of time to sit down and think. So I knew I always wanted to start another business. So I took that time to just do research and things like that. And I didn't really have a set amount of money that I wanted to start my business with, but I already had funding from my first business. So I already had Blink Beauty. So when I was ready to start Renee, I just had that money that I was making from Blink. So basically I used my first business to fund my second business. So it wasn't a set amount of cash, but it was just, um, it was already there but if you want to know about blink beauty to fund that business i just used my hmm i don't even want to call it my last check but consider it my last check that i had from the job that i had at the moment because i started blink beauty in 2015 so i was using my victoria's secret money that was coming in so whatever money i made from that check before i bought my first set of lashes that's what it was i don't remember the exact amount but i didn't make more than like three something every two weeks from that job so <laughs> that was what i started with but for someone that probably doesn't have the financial backing of a first business i would just suggest if you really do want to start a business putting aside like as much as you can on a weekly basis just to get to the goal that you need to start what you want like just start start small because once you really save it up, it's going to make a difference. And it's not going to, um, it doesn't matter when you start and when you start saving. Because um, when you just put a little bit and a little bit, you're going to get to your goal. And on top of that, no one, don't put a time limit on it. Don't say, oh, I want to start my business in December. I need to make sure I have $500. Like, the right time is going to come. Like, you can't put a rush on that. So, that's just some advice to you guys. Question number four. Do you have other streams of income besides your two businesses? No, I wish I did, but I don't. It's just these two for now. But of course, I do plan on starting other things in the future. But other than that, I'm full-time entrepreneur. I don't have another job. This is everything that I do right now. Question number five. What are some marketing tips that you would give to a new business owner? Let me put my phone down for this one. <laughs> Marketing tips that I would give to a new business owner. 
I'm gonna start with clothing because I feel like clothing is something that you have to really market in a really unique way, especially if you're a boutique owner. Number one, do not steal images from other companies if you're trying to brand your business, market your business. Because what's gonna really set you apart from the other boutique that have those same pictures? You wanna build, you know, loyalty within your business you want to have brand trust you want people to feel like okay i'm going to order from this company and i'm going to be certain that i'm going to get the same quality that is that's shown in the picture so i just feel like that's number one just take your own pictures make your own content because the laziness shows if you're not putting in the effort to take your pictures for your clothing line or any other business that you have that's just number one to show that you're not serious about your brand Another form of advice that I would have as far as starting a business and marketing it is be consistent with your post. When you're starting out, you have to be very consistent because having a business is all about relevance. Like if you're not constantly on somebody's Instagram feed and you're not a big business, it's going to be very easy to be forgotten. So you have to keep yourself up on the top of their feed like I suggest as a new business and this is something that I kind of, kind of slack on but I make up for it in other ways just a minimum of three posts per day just to keep yourself on the feed in the morning once in the um, afternoon and once in the evening right before it gets late just so people could constantly see your name popping up even if they're not interested in, interested in what you're posting at first eventually they're gonna click on your page to see what you have going on because it's like alright I'm constantly seeing this post on my feed what are they giving so that's another form of advice that I would give now another good thing with marketing take clean pictures like I'm saying if you gotta buy a camera to get good content that's what you have to do don't constantly rely on an iPhone I know iPhones do have good pictures but that should not be your only form of imaging or whatever you want to call it like it's important to invest in a camera when you have a business I know starting out you might not have that funding or the money that you need to get that but make sure that's an investment that you do make when you do get that money so that's my marketing tips you know just make everything appealing to the eye like take pride in your packaging take pride in your website oh a website is another big thing make sure when somebody goes on your website it's welcoming and it doesn't look you know sketchy because I see a lot of sketchy sites that make people make me say Mm, I'm not going to spend money with this because I don't think that I'm going to get the same thing. So make sure your website looks good. Make sure your packaging is good. Make sure you're keeping up with your content. Just make sure you're on top of your brand because that's what's going to really make your brand grow. So just be on top of everything. I think I'm on question number five. So I'm on question number six. six. Question number six. <laughs> what's the hardest part? when okay hold on what's the hardest part about standing out when selling some of the same items as other boutiques all right so for me i sell a boot i have a boutique right and a lot of other websites might have the same items as me but i don't feel like it's hard for my items to personally stand out because i feel like it's all about how you style what you're selling and it's also about giving your customers an experience like making them feel like okay I need it from her because the way she made it look is just so amazing and I need to get it from her because when you make somebody feel like you're the person that just is making everything look the best or you have it the best way or whatever the case may be they're gonna want to invest into you so it's all about how you deliver it that's gonna make people want to receive it if that makes sense so I just feel like with a boutique and if, if you are a clothing company that wants to start off as a boutique you just have to give that experience to the customer that's gonna make them pick you over everybody else so it's just all about how you market and brand yourself as a business that's why like I said it's important to t make your own content because the content is what's gonna really set the tone for everything else so that's my advice for that content is what is going to set your brand apart from other brands just to make it simple question number seven how did you decide on your target market when it came to selling products 
Um, I decided on my target market just based off the people that I was surrounded with. I know a lot of women ages 20 to 35, so I'm just like, let me sell to the people that I really know that will be interested in my clothing. Like, the vibe I try to give my brand is like sexy, chic, but also affordable for the people that I know that will actually make that purchase. So I just took what I felt was missing from around me and just tried to incorporate it into my brand. Cause where I'm from, I'm from Brooklyn. So in Brooklyn, if you need a last minute outfit, where we would normally go is this mall called King's Plaza. And if you go to King's Plaza, it's a hit or miss. You not always get an outfit. So sometimes you might walk in there and leave happy. And there's times you're gonna walk out and still not have an outfit for the function. So I wanted to be that, I wanted to bridge the gap between females in my environment and my neighborhood not having a place to go when they wanted to shop. So that's just basically what I did and what helped me decide on the perfect target market. So just think about what your area has or what is lacking and how you can fix that. Cause that's what's gonna help you and definitely, most definitely help your business. All right guys, I lost count so next question somebody asked what is your advice for single young girls in college sis my advice is stay single stay single focus on you focus on your goals don't worry about no man no boy actually because in college they're boys so just focus on yourself because honestly in college it's about finding yourself so not finding a man finding yourself so i would just suggest you know doing you go to school take advantage of the opportunity that you are in school first of all a lot of people don't get that opportunity so take advantage of that and do what you have to do to secure your future so yeah stay single like what you need a man for <laughs> so that's my advice for that um Somebody also asked, what do you like to do when you're not working? Sleep. <laughs> I think that's, I'm, I'm always tired. So when I don't have to do anything, I like to sleep. I like to get some rest because I feel like I work, I work so hard sometimes to the point that my body starts shutting down. But I feel like the question, I mean, I feel like the answer that you guys wanted to hear is go out with my friends. I do like to go out with my friends, but... And, you know, go to parties and, you know, stuff like that. But at this point in my life, when I'm not working, I would like to get some rest. And watch Netflix. I like watching Netflix sometimes when I get the chance. If I find a good movie, like, I'll be glued to the TV. But right now, I'm pretty boring. And you could ask my friends. Like, they'd be like, oh, come on. I'd be like, all right, I'm going to come. They did the event. They not even, they can't even find me. Like, <laughs> so... That's what I like to do right now. My answer might change. It depends on the vibe I'm in. But right now, I like to chill, spend some time with my people, and that's about it. Somebody asked me, did you have patience when starting your business? I still have patience within my business. Like, I feel like when you're trying to hit a goal that you have not seen yet, there's nothing that you can have but patience so yes i had a lot of patience like because things wasn't happening the way i wanted it to so i just had to relax and understand that you know if i'm consistent and persistent things will unfold and unravel and just be placed into my hands but not placed into your hands because you got to work for what you want but patience is a virtue and i'm realizing that every day like if you really want something and you really believe in something you're gonna be working towards it and patient until God says you can have it. What, are, what is some advice you would give to your younger self or when you started your first business? Hmm. Advice that I would give to my younger self is don't listen to what people say. Don't even care about what they say. You don't need friends. Um, friends are gonna come and go. Um, there's so many things like just don't get discouraged when things don't go your way oh my gosh like just understand that things are gonna happen at the right time 
I think that's the main thing. I would give myself, give advice to my younger self and also as my business. How did you promote your business when you first started? Instagram, 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 still on Instagram, Instagram. Somebody asked, tips on how to promote your business on Instagram. Post, post, post. <laughs> Keep posting good posts, posts that relate to your brand. Do not post things that don't relate to your brand. For example, if you have a clothing line, don't post videos twerking. They don't wanna see you twerking. They wanna see you in your clothes. So post things that are relevant to what you're doing. I hate to see somebody that's a chef, for example, posting about clothes. Are you a chef or are you in clothing? Like you're confusing me. You don't wanna confuse your potential customer cause that's how you lose them. So post and focus on what's relevant to what you're trying Somebody to Somebody asks, are you gonna add a plus size collection to your clothing line soon? Yes, I do plan on adding a plus size collection to my clothing line. It is actually in the works. Just be patient with me guys cause I feel like you guys are so aggressive. Like this question, I have to answer this probably like 10 times a week like I am constantly getting DMs about this I am not trying to forget about you guys I did not leave you guys out it's just a process when you are with me. somebody said are you single or taken and do you have any relationship advice as an entrepreneur all right guys I am in a relationship and I feel like a lot of you guys don't know that because I'm just super private <laughs> but I have a whole boyfriend <laughs> yeah that's one and relationship advice as an entrepreneur so we're both entrepreneurs me and my boyfriend and it's very hard it's uh, it's hard it's annoying it's like sometimes like why am i even in a relationship because we're both so busy but it works because we're both trying to accomplish our goals um now if you aren't an entrepreneur and you are in a relationship my advice is just still focus on yourself while you are working on your relationship because I feel like a lot of people get so into their relationship and they just forget about their goals and you should never, ever, 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 ever do that. So that's the best advice that I can give you guys. Also, if you are dating, just, you know, communicate with your partner. You know, let them know what you want. Let them know what you don't like. I feel like communication is key. Understanding is key. Forgiveness is key, so that's just my quick little relationship advice. I'm not no relationship expert, so I wouldn't even take my advice. So yeah, just letting you guys know. Next question, what is your nationality? I am from Brooklyn, born and raised, but my ethnicity, nationality is Trini. My mom's from Trinidad, and my dad's actually from, hold on. South Carolina so that's also a fun fact for you guys um how old are you I am 23 years old I'm getting up there you know the last time I made a video I think I was 22 so a whole year later we are here all right guys last question what is your favorite part of being an entrepreneur my most favorite part about being an entrepreneur honestly is touching people like i like hearing from people that how much i inspire them motivate them i just like to be that person that people can come to to get advice if they don't know how to start or when to start or what they should do or how they should do it i just like I feel like God put this in me so I can help other people. Like, that's what I love about being an entrepreneur. Like, I know you guys probably thought I would have said making my own schedule. Like, I like that too, but it's just knowing that you could also help somebody else because you took that leap, that jump, that faith step to just start something on your own. Like, people like coming to me to ask for advice about, like, you know, how did you do this? Why did you do it? That's part of the reason why you're watching this video right now. So that's what I love about being an entrepreneur. Like, I feel like this is definitely my passion. Like, I don't see myself doing anything else. Like, people ask me, like, do you, so do you see yourself working for anybody else? I mean, I don't mind doing, like, having a mentor and learning from them. But to really work with somebody else, I don't want to do this because I see so much potential in my own brand. So... That's my favorite part about being an entrepreneur, like 
if, if anybody out there does want to be an entrepreneur or you're scared to take that step, I highly suggest it. I'm so for it. Do it when the time is right for you, though. When you have everything the way it needs to be. When you have all your ducks in a row. But the entrepreneur life, just know when you get into it, it's very hard. It's challenging. It's going to test all of your limits. Like, it's not going to be a time where you're not going to second guess, why did I do this? But just know when you do start, it's for the greater good and it's for a good cause. So that's the reason why I love being an entrepreneur. Okay, guys, so that's all my questions for today's video. Thank you guys for tuning in. Like I know, like I said earlier, it's been a while, but I promise I'm going to be so much more consistent because like I said, I have so many things coming within my brands, my YouTube channel. Like I got some new revivals on the way. For example, this top is from my Shop Renee collection coming on the way. So tune into that. Um, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe to this video. There are more videos on the way. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe so you guys can get notified to when the next video will be dropping. Also, follow me on Instagram at underscore Shana Renee. That's underscore S-H-A-I-N-A-R-E-N-E. -E. And everything about my businesses will be linked below in the description box. I'm so glad that I did this video for you guys. And I hope it helps somebody that wants to be a business owner entrepreneur whatever you want to do even if you don't want to be in business i just hope that this video helped you today so once again make sure you like comment and subscribe to this video and i'll see you in the next one bye guys